Hi everyone, welcome to Practice Problem Cash 03. In this one, we are going to perform a bank reconciliation. So here we go. Tiger Corps had the following information related to cash for the month ended October 31, 2019. Prepare Tiger Corps' bank reconciliation to determine the correct cash balance as of October 31. Notice the presentation here. I give you some information and then I give you two columns. I give you the uh, current information per the cash ledger, the current information per the bank statement. I, I'm pointing this out because this right here is not a bank reconciliation. This is just the list of information for these things that I am providing you. The goal of the problem is to then use that information to make your bank reconciliation. Um, notice also there is some additional info down at the bottom to take into consideration. With that said, Try pausing the video, pull out a blank sheet of paper, do this on your own. When you're ready, come on back and I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So here we go. I'm gonna move to my blank slide for just a moment and I'm gonna go ahead and set up a column for my bank, a column for my books. This is where I'm gonna do my reconciliation. I just need to separate what am I reconciling on the bank side of things? What am I reconciling on the book side of things? And of course, every bank reconciliation starts off with the ending cash balance for the period that you are trying to reconcile. So in our case, our end date is October 31, 2019. And notice the very first line given here was cash balance, October 31. And so these are the two numbers I need. Per the cash ledger, we had 137,000. Per the bank statement, we had 176,000. So 176,000. 137,000, and I'm gonna mark this as, this was the ending balance per each of these sources of information, okay? Um, as we go, I'll go ahead and scratch things out as we use them. Now, next up, where do you go from here? Well, the bank reconciliation doesn't need to be done in any particular order. However, I do encourage dealing with errors first, because errors can sometimes affect the other information in the problem. And so I'm going to deal with the errors first. In this case, um, this is deposits made in process, checks written, EFTs, NSF. None of that is erroneous, right? But down here at the bottom, it says, in addition to the above information, management of Tiger Corps discovered that a $4,000 check written to a supplier was accidentally journalized for 40,000. So that's one of those words you look for that indicates an error occurred, accident, right? Now, it says that this was a check written to a supplier. So what does the journal entry look like if you write a check to a supplier? Well, it's one of two things. Either it's you're buying supplies and therefore you're paying, or alternatively, it could be that you already bought the supplies and now you're just paying off the account payable that you created, right? Either one of those situations represents the journal entry of paying a supplier. We're not given enough details to know which it's, it is in this situation. So I'm just going to go with the first one. It, it won't make any difference either way here. Um, it says that the journal entry we recorded was this, 40000 Now, it says what should have happened was we only recorded 4,000, right? So this has an extra zero on it, and that's a problem because what that's saying is our cash balance, we recorded a reduction of cash of 40,000. We should have recorded a reduction of cash of only 4,000. That means our cash balance is $36,000 too low on the cash ledger. How are we going to fix that? Well, we're going to come to our book side and we are going to go ahead and add that $36,000 back because that should have never happened. And we call this company error. All right. Now that fixes the error here. However, does that impact any other given information? Well, this is a check written. So up top, we're going to look, is there any information given about checks written? And sure enough, there are right here. Checks written per the cash ledger, 58,000. But remember, that checks written of 58,000, that includes this 40,000 mistake that should have only been 4,000. So whereas our cash balance was 36,000 too low, the checks that we say we wrote, that's 36,000 
too high. We didn't really write $58,000 worth of checks because we didn't really write this $40,000 check. We only wrote a $4,000 check in reality. And so we need to take that, subtract $36,000 from it, and that is going to give us $22,000 as true checks written. And I'm just going to go ahead and put an X through that $58,000 to make sure that we don't accidentally use it. This is a situation where the error affected the other known information, and you've got to make sure you deal with that so that you don't mess up something um, when you're calculating other adjustments. And we're going to see how that plays out in, in just a moment. So um, with that said, let's go ahead and now that we've dealt with the error, work our way through the rest of the bank reconciliation. I'm just going to go down the list here and keep it simple. So um, first thing up we have is deposits made versus deposits processed. Now, per the cash ledger, we deposited $36,000. Per the bank statement, we only deposited $28,000. Now, when you think about who's right and who's wrong in this situation, the company is the one making the deposits. So the cash ledger should be the source of correct information because the company knows what it deposited. If the bank is less than that, what that implies is the bank hasn't processed it all yet. That's something known as a deposit in transit. And specifically in this case, it means that there's an $8,000 deposit in transit because eight of this 36 has not yet been processed by the bank. However, it will eventually. And when it does, it will make the bank balance go up. So how do we deal with that? Add $8,000 to the bank side for the deposit in transit. The bank balance is understated right now because they haven't recorded all the deposits they should have recorded. All right, next up. Well, let me scratch that one out so that we know we've dealt with it. Next up, the checks written in process. Now, here's where that error is going to come back into play. According to the cash ledger, we have $22,000 in checks written. That's the true number of checks written after we fixed our mistake. According to the bank statement, there are only $19,000 in checks written. Just like the deposits, the company knows the truth. The company knows what it wrote. The bank just may not have processed it all yet. And so this leads to $3,000 worth of outstanding checks, okay? $3,000 of checks we wrote that the bank has not yet factored into their balance. Checks we write make cash go down. And so we have to do minus 3,000 for outstanding checks. Once the bank processes it, that balance will go down by $3,000. All right, back to our given info. Scratch that out. An EFT payment to a supplier. Now, EFTs is when the bank transfers money on our behalf without us initiating. In this case, the EFT payment, that's money that left our bank account without our knowledge. So. The bank knows that it sent $12,000 out of our account. We didn't know that until we got the bank statement and found out and are doing this reconciliation. So from the company perspective, we now have to record that minus $12,000 EFT payment to our cash ledger, right? Because the company hadn't recorded this yet. Now we're going to record it because we found out this happened. Next up, an EFT collection from a customer. Same situation. Customer paid the bank directly on our behalf. The bank knows that the customer gave it $20,000. That is factored into the bank balance already. We were the ones that didn't know. The company didn't know. So now we're going to have to record that to our cash ledger. So that is going to be plus $20,000 EFT collection to get our balance in line with what the bank knows already happened. And that's going to bring us to our final piece of information that we haven't dealt with yet. And that is an NSF check from customer deposits. All right. Now, in this case, what this is telling us is that our checks that we received from our customers that we deposited in the bank contained $3,500 worth of NSF checks, non-sufficient funds. In other words, they bounced. We thought the customers paid us. We deposited it in the bank, and the bank denied the check because the bank says the customer doesn't have enough money. Well, what that's going to do, as far as our books are concerned, 
is we're going to have to take that out because we thought we received the money. We debited cash when the customer paid us, and now it turns out the customer didn't really pay us. So now we have to take that back out of our cash. So this is NSF from customer. All right. Now, it looks like we've used all the information. And at this point, we could go ahead and tally up our bank reconciliation. However, what we would find is we would be off just a little bit. And the reason for that actually has to do with this NSF check. Notice it said it was an NSF check from a customer that was part of the bank deposits. Go back up here to our deposit information. In fact, let me just go ahead and clear that line as if we still need to deal with this. Because we thought we had received $3,500 from our customers, we think that we deposited $36,000 into the bank, but we didn't really because we didn't actually get that $3,500. That didn't get deposited, not for real, because it got denied. And so really, we only deposited $3,2500, okay? You have to adjust our deposit number for what we thought was a deposit that didn't turn out to be a deposit. Now, why does this matter? Well, it's just like the fact with the, with the error. The error changed our outstanding check amount because it was part of the calculation for outstanding checks. Notice our calculation for deposits in transit is now going to change because what we're really saying is we only had 32,500 in deposits. The bank has processed 28,000. So that means we've only got 4,500 in deposits in transit, not 8,000. And so now we're going to have to come back over here and we're going to have to fix that. Now, is it a problem that we're fixing this after the fact? Not at all. And similar to the errors, right? Had we waited till the very end to do the error, it wouldn't have been a problem. We would have calculated outstanding checks based on this info. And then when we got to the error, we would have considered that error and we would have gone back and redone the calculation and fixed it, just like we're doing now with deposits in transit. It's okay that we're having to fix this after the fact, but we just have to be aware of making sure we fix it. So anytime other information, usually an error, but maybe sometimes something other than an error, affects some of the other given information, you have to make sure you adjust that other information. So with that said, we have now done everything. Let's go ahead and do a little math on this. Um, on my book side, 137,000 plus 36,000 minus 12,000. Missed the one on that, minus 12,000 plus 20,000 minus 3,500 puts our book balance supposedly at 177,500. Move over to the bank side. We had 176,000 plus 4,500 minus 3,000 puts that at 177,500. Notice our two balances are equal and we can rest assured that that is the amount of cash we should report on our October 31 balance sheet. All right, this one had some twists and turns in it, especially as it came to the error and the NSF check affecting your given information. Those are things you just gotta keep an eye out for. Those are the things that make bank reconciliations hard because otherwise it's a fairly straightforward process. With that said, I hope you found this helpful and I hope you join me for another video.